Um, I prepared a number of slides with a lot of pictures and I think I have to go quite quickly through it. The idea for the talk was uh, to, to give you an idea, an, an impression how our extension um, website works today and where we can uh, move to in the future. It is one example, one option out of a couple and that's the basic idea. Uh, we have two views to the extension. One is from the people who upload an extension to the site, the other is for people who download and the first part is about the developers, the upload of an extension and there we have also two uh, separate um, kind of users. One is the average person, our persona is Eve here in this term, who uploads simple stuff. Let's say a gallery item. Gallery is um, just images. And we have more difficult stuff or more uh, sensitive things like macros or real code. Two options here which are not so relevant for, uh, for this part, but you will see later that I have a, a, a particular view on it. Um, Plone is um, our uh, CMS for the extension side and it starts with this page and when you click on login you get this dialog which is not SSO compatible so you need a different uh, account. After logging in you face this site and uh, it has a, just a dark sidebar which is a little bit weird. Uh, how do you continue? Any idea? No, it is here there is upload a new extension. Below this um, section there is uh, a list of my extension that I uploaded before I can open it via links. Our design is not optimal in this regard because we show links as green uh, text, green font, just green font without underlining. Okay, after clicking on new extension you get uh, the, uh, a page at extension project. You get a title, probably you cannot read it, um, a title, a short description, a long description and below you get a number of uh, options for what uh, module it uh, can work. You get also uh, um, an email reference and a home page and you can enter and you have to enter some more data that are more or less relevant for you to to create the, the extension. After pressing save at the bottom, you get this screen. And now the sidebar is filled. Is the extension online? It is not. Uh, the, the point here is that you create a project and not you don't upload an extension. It is a very special workflow that users likely do not expect and many people to who I talk to uh, do not understand the workflow, including me. It took me years to understand it. Okay, what do you have to do now? You get an, at the sidebar, I cannot read it myself, uh, a couple of options that are also not self-explaining. Let's ignore the info, the blue info section here and go to the first option. This is some apparently editing feature. You get uh, additional information to the project that you created, including a delete button. It's not what we want. So the second part is edit uh, ex extension project. No. Next one, it's a submenu where you can uh, create a linked release. This is, uh, it looks not that bad, but a linked release is also not what you want because it's not um, the release is the, the actual extension file that goes into an extension project and when you link it, you don't upload that file to our site. So what you actually are looking for is the extension release. That's the next point on the submenu on the sidebar, add extension release. It gives you again a lot of um, options to input. It's not optional, it's a mandatory input. You have to um, enter the, pro the, the name of the extension again. You have again to enter some description and when you scroll down you get more. You have a number of, in, in, in this part where the cursor is, a number of um, possible licenses and you have to check it 
what licensee extension is uh, released under. Below you get all the uh, LibreOffice releases and you have to check the releases where your extension is uh, working because extension might not work in all um, uh, older releases or are not, up, uh, not compatible with a new one. If you scroll down you get a large disclaimer and you get more input fields and including um, a field uh, where the source code is. Um, in, in our page if you don't include the source code you have to uh, add a reference to it. We, I think we can come uh, later to it. And the last point is about the platform where this extension works. So you press save and here is a little bit of feedback. If you do an, um, a mistake, if you don't enter certain information, you get a little bit feedback, but hard to read. It is um, not, again, not really self-explaining. So I edit everything and after that uh, I edit some file we can only uh, deal with OXT files. You get again an error, it says uh, error. Cannot read it, but it's a uh, very un generic uh, error message that does not tell you what is wrong. So we, have, we would have rooms for improvement. When you have done everything, you created the project, you uploaded a file, you understood the process, then you end up at this page and again there is a, a green bar and it tells you remember your, the status of your extension is not uh, in, in the proper uh, mode. Okay, status. It is in the sidebar there is again a menu with a lot of options. What you have to do, I cannot read it's through everything, what you have to do is to set it to active or to publish. It is um, one point here in the list and uh, you send a message to the um, admin of our site to release the a project including the extension and to make it public. The admin is responsible for checking it to make sure that the license is uh, set, uh, that uh, the extension is containing all the files that are needed and all this stuff. What you get as a developer is exactly this message. You get it from the admin of the LibreOffice extension site, the status has, has changed. And you get it again if uh, it is not accepted. So you do, do not know why things are not working in a way that you expected. What else do you have? A couple of menus more. Uh, you can uh, change uh, the, the project here again. You can set some, um, um, the, the, you can change the maintainer, the, the, the rights, the, uh, yeah, rights to deal with it. And uh, finally, you can of course also delete it. Uh, after deleting, the project is still there. So if you not understood so far that a project is not an extension file, then you realize there is some weird things are ongoing. Actually, the, going back, uh, I had it on, on the first slide of this, um, um, on the set, there's one button, uh, one big red button where you can delete the, the project itself. So the, the, you cannot download the Ponyhof anymore. That's for sure. How does it look with uh, Open Collaboration Service? It is a website. Um, it has developed uh, for a number of years. It was uh, before um, GNOME Eye Candy or the like. I'm, I'm not perfectly sure. But it is one website that hosts extension for uh, different projects, mostly for KDE and GNOME, but also a large number of different sites. Um, the uh, project itself is called Open Collaboration Service, but the website is Open Desktop, so you can look, take a look at that. From my perspective, it looks like a modern page. You have uh, on the top some kind of uh, login button, and you uh, back. Um, uh, I wanted to tell you before, it is not um, necessary to to have one site. You can also one look and feel of the Open Desktop site. You can also um, personalize the, the start site. 
Video Learn client has the add-ons on this page and has created a, an own start site that looks different to the main page, but it's on the same site. After logging in, you get a, a, a screen, it works with SSO, and you see uh, again the, the, the page, you get a menu where you can create a new extension. It starts similarly with uh, the input of, a, of the um, name of your extension with a longer description. You have also some information uh, about um, yeah, small printed, let's say the, the license and some categorization information. You get uh, logos there, I uploaded the same logo here, and you can uh, finally add some, is it here, some social media references for your project. After saving this, you get to the next step, uh, or in this case, I, I missed uh, the point to categorize the Ponyhof, and you get an error message quite close to what we did. Categorization is done with a uh, standard format, so you go to, let's say, uh, apps, office, uh, um, and LibreOffice, maybe. When you have done everything, then you need to upload the files, and this platform has a cool feature of the Git integration, which means a, an extension project could have all the uh, fancy stuff which uh, Git offers. I didn't do it here, I stepped over and said, I want to upload a file. And this is how the file uploading works. You say, you load the file to the platform, then you set up a version number, um, um, where it works on, on what system, and uh, the architecture. That's all. After that, your extension is online. And this is really online, meaning the user can download it. If you have, as a, as a contributor, if you want to participate in the project and uh, you do some um, design-related stuff, some small, not really uh, hard things, you still want your stuff being shown in the project. And actually, that's what you want. You want to upload it and immediately get feedback and share these things on social media. That's our, it's working here. There are um, also some additional really fancy features. The company is called Pling and they uh, give Plings for uh, download. I uploaded for testing purpose uh, to, uh, um, one application and one extension here to the site and it got downloaded in total by 15 times. So I earned 15 Plings, which makes it 15 cent US cent uh, that I earned from the company. I can uh, get my, uh, my salary for the hard work uh, only with, with one dollar, but this is a, a cool thing. Uh, uh, the, the yellow disclaimer tells you the company is probably stopping this, uh, uh, this survey uh, at some point. I think when you get a million downloads, you don't earn 100,000 from, from the playing company. But the idea is pretty nice to to, monitor, to give the uh, people a, a way to monetize their work. It has also a cool feature that is relevant for the user perspective. User means uh, how do you get the extension, how do you download. And typically you have a couple of uh, um, requests, in this case I listed a theme, maybe you also want a new font or you want to download the uh, help files. Today you have to go to a certain page, you need to know where the stuff is, you need to download it, and in case when it's an extension it is placed at the right position, but not when you do these things with help files or whatever, or when it's not possible right now, like uh, the uh, personalization themes. If we stick to uh, uh, make the combination with um, Mohamed's uh, presentation. If we stick to this Mozilla, everything remains at Mozilla, but when we consider to dump it and do our own themes, then themes would be a part of the extension or could be part of this system. So user wants to download it and 
it is possible, of course it's possible on both uh, sides, they list it, they have an opportunity to filter things, um, you can go through the uh, categories, what type of, uh, uh, of application it is, you can list on this main page only the LibreOffice uh, themes, but you can also search for it, uh, miss it, um, and you can filter all this stuff. That's possible, I think it's pretty much clear how it works, but I wonder if a user really wants to go to some weird website and load it from a website. That's actually not true. Let's say you want to use a, a specific font that's in a process while you edit a document. You create a text and you see, okay, I do not want uh, to use a serif font, I want something fancy, some um, monotype font. In this case, you don't want to go to, uh, exit the application, load a font, put it on the right page, start the application, load the file. No, you want to go to the, at, within the workflow, at the point where the, um, the, the object is being used, there you want to load it. And that's what is known from KDE as get hot new stuff. In this case, it is some uh, background image or the like, I don't know, but you get these filtered pieces of apps, I would call it better, not extension, but apps, it's a nice term. You get the type of additional features here listed, you click on it and you download it and you can use it. We can do the same, we can provide similar dialogue. It is a very easy thing to download the extension, the let's say the font and uh, whatever we need in the program and put it at the right place. It could be, for instance, in the uh, properties dialog below the um, font list. If you see I'm missing a font, it could be uh, written in, if you get a, a document from a Windows user and you don't have the, uh, or Mac user, you don't have the Helvetica font, then you can just click on the load font button at the dialog, you get another uh, connection dialog to the extension platform and you download it. Developers are concerned about security in, in that regards and the nice thing is of uh, this get hot new stuff feature is that it is known from KDE and you have the flex at this platform to put it into this workflow or to have it as a separate type of extension. I think we can do it only for, uh, we, sh we shouldn't do it for macros. So going back to the, to the first slide when I said we have users who want to contribute with simple design um, add-ons, those should be integrated very closely in the program, but others like macros that are safe to element maybe privacy relevant, that could be excluded from this workflow. What type of extension uh, could be possible? So we have, right now, we have dictionaries, we have templates, we have language tools. Uh, we could also have uh, color schemes, that's what we have today, color schemes, gallery content, clip art, but we could add menu configuration. Why? The design team is continuously trying to improve the menus. This improvement is not an improvement for many people and we get a lot of complaints, where is my function? And we could upload the menu from, let's say, version 5.4 and the user just loads the menu configuration with one click and gets the uh, behavior that is known to him or her. That's true also for shortcuts. We could provide shortcuts, uh, let's say localized shortcuts. You load a shortcut definition for English or for French or for German, Spanish, whatever, that fits into your system. Makes a lot of sense to me. Icon seems it is ridiculous that we ship four or five different icon seams. Those have to be placed in, in some external things. I don't go through the rest of the ideas here, 
the last point, the least, in my opinion, is macros. With macros, we get some people uh, who are experts in the programming, but most contributors start with simple things. Of course, when I talk about macros, we can also make the application even more broader, more, uh, more, more lean and, uh, let's say, exclude all filters from the program and provide only the, uh, the uh, basic ODT features, but put everything which is a filter, let's say OXML, into one extension and you load the filters into the program. That allows to be way more faster in updating the uh, interaction. Of course, it is a big scale change. Why not hard coded stuff? It is pretty clear. We clutter our, um, our system with, with requests. Here it is about notebook bars. We have a, a million requests to change the notebook bar. How should we as a let's say QA team or design team deal with a request of one user saying, um, why do you not include this button in your notebook bar? It might make sense, of course, it is a, a good request, but in my opinion, we should exclude all these requests from the core system and put it into the design of this particular look and feel layout. The same is true for what is it? Icon themes. We have many requests about icons. And this one is about the menu bar. So, the point is, QA should focus on the core product. We want to encourage people to contribute. That should be as easy as possible. We want to allow crazy ideas. Um, if someone shows up and presents a notebook bar with uh, just three bu uh, buttons on it and thinks it is a good thing, I, I have no means uh, to allow him to, to share it or, or I would refuse it, of course, but why not? We have to uh, duplicate stuff, we update for example, fonts, when uh, the Liberation font was got into a new release recently, so we have to think or to remember to update the font from one place, copy it to our place, upload to our uh, platform and create a hash sum and put it into our release. That's yeah, not necessary. And finally, I think keeping the code clean is also a good thing. And it improves usability, of course, when you uh, get things into the program. If you can download dictionaries and help, and let's say also localization, in the same way how you deal with everything, it's easy to understand. I don't have to say anything more, so it's a funny closing slide. Thank you. Eight minutes or seven minutes are left. Five minutes uh, on my watch. So if there's no question. It is work in progress. It is not the only option. We also think in the team about different ways to improve our extension side. It was one few how we de could deal with it. One existing. Uh, and we will see how it turns out in the future. So thank you.